the American Ceramic Society and the Ceramic and Glass Industry Foundation are pleased to provide you with this instructional video for the student lab activity, Thermal Processing of Bobby Pins. The objective of this lesson is to show the difference that processing, especially thermal processing, can have on the properties of a material. In this lab, students will see how thermal treatment of a normal steel bobby pin can influence its mechanical properties, especially strength, ductility, and deflection. Some of the materials used in this lesson are included in the Materials Science Classroom Kit, while other items will need to be purchased. Those items are commonly found in grocery or department stores. In some instances, it is appropriate for students to bring some items from home, which helps pique their interest. The materials needed for this demonstration are one package of bobby pins, plastic cups with twine, five C-clamps, Bunsen burner or propane torch, pliers or tongs, pennies, 300 per group, ruler, cup filled with cold water. Set aside one pin to be used as the control. The control sample will not receive any heat treatment. Heat a second pin using the Bunsen burner or torch. The entire pin should be heated until the bobby pin glows red hot. Keep the bobby pin in the flame for 20 to 25 seconds after it starts glowing red. After the bobby pin has been removed from the flame and returns to a gray color, set the bobby pin on a paper towel and allow it to continue to cool. This bobby pin has been annealed. Heat another bobby pin. Place the looped end in the flame, heating the loop at about one-third of the pin. The pin should again be kept in the flame until glowing hot for 20 to 25 seconds. Remove the pin from the flame and immediately plunge it into the cup of cold water. Set the bobby pin on a paper towel and allow it to dry completely. This bobby pin has been quenched. Punch a hole on each side of a plastic cup and attach the twine. And be sure that the cup and string are hanging from the end of the bobby pin. Create a paper funnel by rolling a piece of paper and either stapling it or taping it. Using the funnel, start placing pennies into the cup one at a time. The pennies should be funneled in at a steady pace, but in a way that they do not fall a large distance when they enter the cup. Add a total of 300 pennies to the cup. Measure and record the deflection of the control bobby pin using a ruler. Unload the control bobby pin. Measure and record any permanent deflection. Bend the control bobby pin back to its original position to remove the permanent deflection. The control bobby pin should return to its original position. Set up the annealed bobby pin as you did with the control pin. Add the pennies in the same fashion as the control bobby pin. Measure and record the deflection of the pin using a ruler. Unload the bobby pin. Measure and record any permanent deflection. Bend the annealed bobby pin back to its original position. The annealed bobby pin may break when you try to do this. Repeat the process using the quenched bobby pin. Set up the quenched bobby pin as before. Load the pennies into the cup being held by the quenched bobby pin in the same fashion as the control and annealed bobby pins. If properly quenched, this bobby pin will break before reaching the maximum load of 300 pennies, usually at a loading of 70 pennies. Consult the teacher's manual included in the Material Science Classroom Kit for discussion questions to ask before, during, and after the demonstration.